Hello, and welcome to the Once Again Podcast. We are your hosts, Ashley and Jason. In this episode, we will be celebrating the spooky season by looking at the 1998 film Halloween Town. In this series, we won't be doing a deep analysis of the film or giving a bunch of behind the scenes facts, but rather giving our overall impressions of the film and giving a score to the film. So carve those jack o' lanterns and enjoy this episode. Ooh. Yeah. Halloween Town is a 1998 Disney Channel original movie directed by Dwayne Dunham and the first installment in the Halloween Town series. It is also the fourth Disney Channel original movie. The film centers on Marnie, who on her 13th birthday learns that she is a witch, discovers a secret portal, and is transported to Halloween Town, a magical place where ghosts and ghouls, witches and werewolves live apart from the human world. But she, she soon finds herself battling a wicked warlocks, evil curses, and endless surprises. The budget for the film was $4 million, or in today's money, $7.3 million. The box office? Well, there wasn't one because it wasn't released to box offices. It was a Disney Channel original movie. However, I do have a bit of trivia here that the film was shot over, tw- uh, over 24 days in St. Helens, Oregon during the summer of 1998 and in fact they have a month-long spirit of halloween town event to celebrate uh, the october holiday and allow fans of the movie to explore the town they even try to recreate parts of the set like the giant jack-o'-lantern in the town square and the film premiered on october 17th 1998 on the disney channel the screenplay was by paul bernabom who is also credited with the original story, John Cooksey and Allie Matson. It was produced by Ron Mitchell and Brian Pogue. Edited by Martin Nicholson. Music was by Mark Mothersbaugh. Cinematography by Michael Slovis. The production company was Snow White Entertainment. The runtime is 84 minutes. It's starring Debbie Reynolds as Agatha Aggie Cromwell, Kimberly J. Brown as Marnie Piper, Judith Hoag as Gwen Piper, Joey Zimmerman as Dylan Piper, Emily Roski as Sophie Piper, Philip Van Dyke as Luke, Robin Thomas as Calabar, the mayor of Halloween Town, and Reno Romano as the voice of Benny. Let's, Benny. let's dive into the plot. The film, do you like Benny? <laughs> All right. But I remembered, I remembered very early him being evil later on, temporarily, mm. so I was like, mm, it's Benny. Inter- the, well, this was, uh, unlike our last Halloween thing, where I think I've watched everything. Uh, no, but, you did not watch Nightmare Before Christmas. When oh, you're that. right, you're right, that's, yeah. But this is also my first time watching this. I remember it always being on Disney Channel around Halloween time, but I never watched it before. So this was my first time watching this film, and let's dive into it fascinating i have watched this one before so the film begins with marnie piper and her mother gwen arguing over why she and her younger siblings dylan and sophie can never go out on uh, for halloween and wanting to go to a costume party that quote unquote the whole world is going to gwen patiently explains but with no detail it is little surprise that marnie still has a problem with her mother's orders and I have a note here. The, the summary for this was very short, so it didn't really get into all the d- different plot things, but I wrote down that I love Dylan, Marnie's nerdy little brother, and how he goes off on how candy causes uh, cavities and gum disease, and that he's the perfect 90s nerd character. Oh, yeah. He's like a good... He's like young Sheldon level. Yes. Perfect nerd yeah. character. But what I think is funny about this is like, ah, yes. Because telling your kids they can't do something that every other kid in America is currently doing always works out for the best. Yeah, like, right. lady, if you wanted your family to, like, ignore Halloween and, like, you should be making a big deal out of Halloween. Because yeah. kids Marnie's age would be like, ugh, my mom loves Halloween. I hate Halloween. I am. Because my yeah. mom hates Halloween. Or, like, just have them be normal. Your kids wouldn't question... If it, they wouldn't question anything about you if you were like had let them go trick or treating, like 
Instead, they're being like, Mom, why are you so weird about Halloween? Yeah. It's kind of weird that you're weird about Halloween. It, it is very strange because she wants them to be a normal family, but then doesn't let them participate in normal activities. Like yeah, and our, Marty's friends are like, yeah, can't Marty come to our Halloween party? Yeah. Like, everyone else is going to. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's very odd. Like, an odd choice to, like, no, we're just not celebrating Halloween, like, Okay, well, when has that ever worked? Yeah. You're right. Well, she's a 90s uh, Disney Channel mom, so she has to not explain her reasoning behind things. Um, Do what I want because I can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gwen has more or less res restored order when her mother, Aggie, who is an expert witch, shows up for her annual Halloween visit. The kids are, happy, are happier to see Aggie than Gwen is, and it is soon shown why. Aggie openly encourages the kids to get more involved in all things Halloween, and Gwen is nearly powerless to stop her. Which, I don't know. It's, uh, I, I find it strange how much the kids love their grandmother, considering that they only see her once a year every Halloween. And they're even like, and then they're like, yeah, Mom, the grandma doesn't come around because even grandma fight. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But I, I wrote down a note here saying that watching this movie now, years after it came out, made me realize how much Debbie Reynolds and Carrie Fisher really looked alike. Because the last few years of Carrie Fisher's life, we saw what she looked like as an older woman, and like in the Star Wars movies and everything. And I was just like, "Oh wow, they they really do look like mother and daughter." Yeah. So, um, moving right along, Aggie seems especially intent on training Marnie as a witch since it's her thirteenth Halloween. Marnie, of course, has no idea about any of this. Aggie drops a huge hint as she is about to head home, reading the kids a bedtime story. When Sophie sees a drawing of a witch that closely resembles her big sister, Aggie does nothing to stop Marnie from imagining such a thing. And I, I wrote down, I don't really see the, the, the drawing of Marnie, that it really looks like her. It reminds me of, like, astrology. Like, it could be her. Like, yeah. it's a teenage-looking witch with brown hair. Yeah. Like, it could be anybody. Yeah, but, like, that's the thing about Disney animators, and we're, we're going to get into this maybe a little bit in the next film that we cover... I mean, it should look more like her. Like, it should look, like, detailed and not and be like, oh, yeah, that's exactly her. And they could do that, but they don't for whatever reason for this movie. Um, Gwen and Aggie get into an argument about all of this, and Gwen insists Marnie be raised as a normal person and not a witch. Aggie says she disagrees with this, but actually she is there for another reason. People have suddenly started mysteriously disappearing. Gwen thinks that they just moved, but Aggie says that it's not that simple. Aggie desperately asks for Gwen's help, but Gwen declines. Aggie is distraught by Gwen's disregard for the safety of her old home and leaves, turning the chicken leftovers into a live chicken on the way out. Gwen is not aware that Marnie is, uh, was watching the whole time. Marnie runs back upstairs to tell Dylan what she just saw, and Dylan says she's crazy. They then follow Aggie covertly, uh, covertly to a previously non-existent bus stop. When the bus indeed arrives, Marnie and Dylan sneak aboard. Uh, suddenly, the bus shakes violently and the bus is filled with flashing lights. And before they know it, the bus is landing in Halloween Town. And I have a note here saying, uh, two of the monsters on the bus discuss how the mortal world is changing and we get a Jerry Springer reference. And I wrote down that this is a 90s movie to the T. Green. Also, I just like... Nobody noticed the two kids sneak on the freaking bus. Like, you're all monsters. You're all not, like, hyper aware. It's, it's, it's Especially, a... like, you don't want children coming back randomly from the mortal realm, I assume. So, like, why wouldn't you be like, yo, these two children belong to anybody? Yeah. Like, Well, not only that, but it's a school bus bus. And when you open up the back door on school bus buses, it makes an alarm go off. So, like, not it's the Halloween Town bus, <laughs> no, Jason. No, I, I guess not. It's also interesting that a third character sneaks on with... <laughs> Absolutely nobody noticing. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Aggie doesn't see Marnie and Dylan getting off the bus. At the same time, Marnie and Dylan don't see Sophie getting off the bus. <laughs> Dylan notices her, and Marnie asks what she's doing there. Sophie says that she was only pretending to sleep. She heard everything Marnie to told Dylan and followed them. They then begin to look for Aggie, who they have lost, when the mayor, Caliban, approaches them. He whistles for the cab, which is driven by Benny, a skeleton with a quote-unquote bad sense of humor. Love Benny so much. But also, how does Sophie get on the bus? Yeah. Like, it's, does she magic herself on there? Because there's no... 
way she snuck in after them. Like, where was she sitting? She wasn't sitting with them. Well, th that's the thing about the movie um, that we'll, we'll get into later as well, but it clearly shows that Sophie is the magic one. She makes the cookie that she wants levitate towards her and everything uh -huh. like that. Like, she's clearly the magic. She somehow got onto this bus with no one seeing, like, just because she wanted to be on the bus with everyone else. So she's very clearly magical at an early age, and Marnie has shown no signs of magical capabilities to this point. And neither has Dylan, for that fact. But I thought they were going to do a thing that only women could be witches, like that Like Dylan wasn't going to be mm -hmm. magical. But at the end of the movie, he's magical too. Spoilers. <laughs> um, but uh, where did I... Oh, um, I wrote down that obviously the mo this movie came out first, but the skeleton driving the cab reminded me of the night bus scene from Harry Potter, Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. So I wrote down a note saying, Take it away, Benny. <laughs> oh my god. Because of the shrunken head. I know, moment. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know what we're referencing. Yeah, it's an awful scene, but yeah, it just it made me think of that. And uh, Dylan says that Benny is probably an animatronic and that Disneyland is full of them. Oh, you know I appreciated the animatronic. <laughs> con I yeah. was like, I mean, man. And then uh, Marnie is like, oh, if it, you let me know when Mr. Lincoln can drive me because Mr. Yeah. Lincoln was the first animatronic. Right. So okay. I was like, you know what? We're doing some good Disney history here. Agreed. <laughs> the three siblings find their grandmother's home, and against her better judgment, Aggie decides not to take them home immediately. She says she'll start Marnie's witch's, uh, witch training, but has to take care of the, of the bad thing first. And I have a note here saying, Aggie's microwave setting, bubble, toil, and trouble. I died. Like also, like, <laughs> instant potion making makes yeah. me giggle the whole time. Yeah. But also, she doesn't even blink an eye like, oh, the kids followed me. Okay. Like, yeah. doesn't even care. Like, fairly bats an eyelash that they're there. Like, wouldn't she be like, oh, I am so screwed. Like, the kids are here. Well, I had a question that I guess gets answered by the movie, but not really. Because I thought, going into this that you could only travel between the mortal world and Halloween Town on Halloween by taking the bus. But in a few moments, another character shows up in Halloween Town that just shows up. I guess you have to... My, my theory is is that if you're a fully trained witch or warlock, you can travel. If you're talking about Gwen, Gwen did take a bus. I, don't, yeah. I think she like vaguely mentions it, but she did take the bus in. Okay. So. Okay. I thought she just showed up. Because even when she's confronting the uh, two guys or the two-headed guy about when the next bus is they're like oh, it broke down and like i was just like oh it's next halloween that the next bus is going to be available but let, let's let's move on let's get back into the plot aggie shows her grandchildren what she is talking about in a cauldron a vision of a hooded demon appears laughing maniacally aggie has a talisman that she says can defeat this demon but her witch's brew is defective so she has to take the kids into town and get ingredients to make her own and I wrote down here, Aggie's brief encounter with her friend Harriet is the perfect example of creepy 90s Disney. You're watching a family-friendly movie, then bam, <laughs> creepy stuff out of nowhere. Like yeah. the music and her face and, and like yep. it slows down. It was like, whoa, what is this? In town, Marnie discovers a broom shop and the family is introduced to Luke, who looks like a normal human kid. He makes a clumsy pass at Marnie, which she turns down on the spot. After, Luke offers to take Marnie out for an ice cream, and she stares daggers at him. Benny earlier explained that Luke once looked like a troll, but claimed a shadow demon made him handsome. Marnie picks up her broom, and she and Aggie take it for a test drive. And here's another example of why I thought Marnie had no magic, because she doesn't fly the broom on her own, her grandmother flies it with her. And I put a note here, do you want to get into the history of witches and their brooms, or do you think that's a inappropriate... Do you know the... No, and we don't need to right now. Okay, all right. I'll, maybe I'll tell it to you off podcast. We, we can talk about it on the car ride later. Okay. Um, <laughs> when they get back, a distressed Gwen has shown up and orders the kids to return home immediately. Marnie uh, fights her briefly, but eventually uh, knows that she cannot win once her mother decides to ground her. Another 90s. You're grounded. Oh, that ends it. <laughs> You're grounded. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and my note, I put a note here. How did Gwen arrive in Halloween Town if the bus is the only way in or out? I think she does vaguely mention taking the bus. I don't remember where, but I vaguely remember that. Okay. I, I literally watched this a few, few hours ago. Oh. So. And then I, I just I just put in my brain that um, like she could travel between the worlds, but the children couldn't, and that's why they would need the bus. But I guess the bus just runs all the time, and the grandmother only visits on Halloween. No, the bus only does run 
through Halloween. Okay. That's why they have to take it back before the end of the movie. Okay. All but right. it's also explained that, like, time... Is different. Is different okay. for Halloween Town. And, like, All right. That, you know, it could be, like, a couple of, like, weeks and then an hour can pass and hard world or you know it could be a couple weeks and two weeks can pass like it's that makes sense gwen can't find another bus back to the mortal world and when she tries to see if the mayor can do anything she is shocked to learn that the mayor is calabar her old boyfriend i wrote a note here saying calabar is another horny disney adult just like the parents in hocus pocus on the move he's (laughs) like i'm gonna get this woman right now well even he meets the kids yeah when when he meets the kids he's like oh your mother's Gwen, like he, he's, and then he's like, "Is your mother here?" Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, Where's your mother at? Yeah, he's he's another horny Disney adult. <laughs> to be fair, it is her reason she does. He does what he does. So you know. You're right. When Calabar briefly leaves to handle another problem, Gwen and her kids see Aggie walking somewhere with Luke. Sensing Aggie might be in trouble, they follow Aggie and Luke to the uh, to an abandoned movie theater, which. <laughs> The, the one joke that Aggie made about how they get all the best movies, like, it's a wonderful death. Like, I was like, <laughs> Love oh, it. yeah. Um, once inside, Gwen and Aggie find themselves battling the hooded demon that they had previously seen in the cauldron. The demon freezes Aggie and Gwen with an evil spell, and suddenly Marnie finds herself in charge. She decides to finish what Aggie started, with some help from Dylan and Sophie, by gathering the ingredients for the witch's brew, that will hopefully make the talisman work. They are successful and soon find themselves battling the demon, who reveals himself to be none other than Calabar himself. Also, them getting all the ingredients is hilarious, by the way. Like, that entire yeah. like, section is just funny to me. Yeah, the summary skipped over it, but, you know, they shaved they're the like, werewolves. Yeah, and they're, and... like, at the dentist getting, like, a tooth from a... Yeah. Yeah, the, the one I could have done without was the sweating ghost. Yeah, that was like, a little... I was, I was like, oh, okay. Didn't like that. Yeah, um, Didn't like. But with the help of Luke, who has realized the error of his ways, Marnie disables Calabar long enough, but is affected by the spell. Just as she is about to fall asleep, she remembers what happens and drops the talisman to light up the jack-o'-lantern and unfreeze Aggie and Gwen, as well as the other Halloween Town citizens whom Calabar had trapped in the theater previously. Uh, Gwen and Aggie rush to help the to help the kids and to find out what has happened. Marnie, Gwen, and Aggie confront Calabar. Calabar is apparently bitter over the fact that their kind was forced to relocate to this new world because humans wouldn't accept them, and that Gwen passed on him years ago for a mortal man. Man, that's like... That's bitter, bitter, like... Yeah. Well, that's the thing. T- it's also not just implied, but flat out stated that witches and warlocks and everything live much longer than mortal people. hmm Because their grandmother has lived at the same house in Halloween Town for 200 years, but she also talks about when she knew Merlin and King Arthur and everything, so yeah. she's very old, and I, we don't get Gwen's exact age here, but it could have been hundreds of years ago that her and Calabar were a thing. I don't know. Maybe the this se- man has spent the last hundred years being like, "I'm in love with this woman," yeah, I have and to she give chose a mortal who's gonna die in like forty years. Which make, it's interesting to think about. Like, what? What? How would she? Exp- I, oh no, that's right. Because they say if uh, Marnie wasn't trained, the magic would have left her. So I was gonna say, how would she explain to Marnie when Marnie's like three hundred years old why she lived for three hundred? But the magic would have left her. I forgot that. Why part. she's like a hundred and yeah. still looks like a child? Yeah. But the three of them aren't enough. Sophie, who has also shown signs of possessing magic, and Dylan, when angered, also displays power himself, uh, despite trying to deny it. The five of them combine their powers and destroy Calabar using the talisman. Gwen agrees to let Marnie start training and even invites Aggie to live with them. The film ends with the family going onto the bus to the mortal world with a happy goodbye and a thanks to Luke as the bus uh, as the bus driver and blasts off. Yeah, Marnie kisses Trolloc on the on the cheek. It's yeah, cute. yeah, and he says, "Oh, I didn't turn into a prince or whatever." And yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's the end of the film. Um, should we go into our overall scores? Or I we... suppose you oh. can go first. All right. all right, So I wrote down. Nostalgia is a very powerful thing, and I can easily understand why anyone who grew up watching this movie loves it and thinks of it as a Halloween classic. 
Unfortunately, this was the first time I watched it, so nostalgia didn't affect me. Don't get me wrong, putting this movie in its proper context, a 90s made-for-TV Disney movie, will also play a part in my overall score, but I have some heavy criticism of this film. Firstly, Marnie is just awful. I don't mean the actress. Kimberly J. Brown did a great uh, did great with the material she was given. I just mean her. Uh, she's an awful character. She, like Max from Hocus Pocus, is a 90s know-it-all protagonist. They're always right, even when they're wrong, because the plot needs them to be. They face no real danger because it's a children's movie, so everything they do will lead to them being right and saving everyone. I just feel that Marnie exudes these characteristics even more strongly than Max did. I would also uh, criticize the way that, Gre that Gwen was written, but I don't want to be negative for the next six hours, so I'll summarize it by saying that she has all the worst aspects of a 90s TV movie mom. I did enjoy, I did however, enjoy Debbie Reynolds very much in this film, though I think she was underused. I'll be interested to see what they do with her character in the sequel movies, and the rest of the cast did a fine job with their roles. For me, the best part of the movie was actually the music. I thought the film was scored very well, and that the music set the correct mood for each scene. The costumes were also very well done, especially when you consider how small the budget for this film was. Overall, I'm giving Halloween Town a 5 out of 10. It wasn't terrible, but it also wasn't great. I will greatly admit I am hit with nostalgia for this, because I did watch this as a kid, so... And you're, you're definitely right about the music. Honestly, I love the Halloween Town like theme song, so hearing that when I was first watching it, I was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> love this movie. I think you're right in regards to Marnie definitely having that, like, character problem. But I also think what kind of makes her not as bad as Max is, Max doesn't have side characters that are also making it worse because none of the children in Hocus Pocus, like, I'm like, at least Sophie is useful. And Dylan is, like, interesting. And, like, if you can't get behind Marnie, you can at least get behind them enough. Mm -hmm. We're, like... I don't feel that way about any of the children from Hocus Pocus. Like, I'm just like, okay, eat them all for all I care. It doesn't matter. So I think that's the difference for me in that regard. I don't know. I just, I kind of ignored the Gwen thing, to be honest. I just go, eh, it's a TV mom. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to not like mom. We're supposed to hate mom. Even though mom's just doing the best. I gave it a 7 out of 10. Okay. All right, well, with all that out of the way, this has been the Once Again Podcast. Any questions, comments, or critiques can be addressed to our email at onceagainpod at gmail.com. Follow us on our social media accounts, Once Again Pod, all one word, on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. If you'd like to contribute to the podcast, we have several tiers available on patreon.com slash onceagainpod. As always, a like, follow, or share would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. And remember, we will entertain you. We will always entertain you. Stiltskin always says that magic comes with a price. But for this price, you can get a nice piece of jewelry. Use code ONCEPOD for 10% off your first order at Unusual Magic Jewelry on Etsy. Click the link in the description.